You're alone in your living room. The lights are off. The muted blue glare of the TV reminds you of just how helpless you really are. Thunder shrieks. The wind howls. And the attic creaks. The knock of the door surprises you. ruh Raging ordered any pizza? You stand up as the door crashes open. And the murder murder crew enters your home. Oh, yeah. They yell jokes. Pop culture references and start mansplaining some of the most true file crimes you've ever heard of. You listen to them, I'm sure at first, but relaxing into it. Pretty soon you're laughing, horrifying, and strangely turned on. <laughs> at some point, they've realized they've forgotten to introduce themselves. So make room in your heart for Grant, Jamie, Austin, Carlton, Joseph, and friends, lovers, and her acquaintances that they pressure into hanging out. Like your creepy boss that has no friends and keeps sleeping with your co-worker. All right, gang. We're going to split up and look for clues. I mean, condoms and clues. Daphne, you go check that Fifty Shades of Grey-themed sex dungeon. And I'll come in after you. Everybody else, fuck off. Make room for murder murder. Zoinks! So I saw these hobos <laughs> fucking <laughs> <laughs> on uh, today's episode of Murder Schmurder. It's fighting over this meatball sub, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well it started as fighting. It turned into, you know, <laughs> love. Today's host <laughs> is love. the lovable, amazing, very strong, um, not punchable, <laughs> 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 but can definitely dish it out for sure. My collarbone hurts. Um <laughs> <laughs> Got a nice bruise on it. Does uh, it still hurt? Yeah. <laughs> Punch him in the collarbone? I didn't really aim for the collarbone. I just got mad and was like chest. Hell, hell yeah. <laughs> um, Joseph is our host today. Hey, hey what's up, y'all? Joseph. Hey, Joseph. Hey. Hey. Oh, beep, this beep, is not the clapping for the beginning of the episode. This is the clapping in recognition of my punching abilities. Yeah. I'm fucking here for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um gathered y'all here today um, to go over some, a fun one. Uh, but first, I think Sam had a story. I mean, it wasn't really a story. I was just trying to fuck up with Jamie, but I was just taking a bag of trash out after work. And there's an issue with like where our dumpsters are at, <laughs> at my shop. They're like, in an enclave so it's like a big like it, it's like a cave and then you like roll the dumpsters in and out of them hmm. but it makes yeah. like a little nice little hobo nook right behind and usually like people sleep back there so i walk around the corner and i see one of our standard homeless people sorry my brother gets upset when i call him hobos but i'm gonna keep calling him hobo uh so there's like one of our like standard neighborhood hobos standing right there and he just like kind of like randomly like weirdly looks around and i'm like What's up, dude? And I just keep walking. I go and I just like without breaking stride, throw my trash bag into the dumpster. And as I look while I'm throwing, I just see two large other homeless gentlemen in various states of undress behind the <laughs> behind the dumpsters. And I say, not my fucking problem. <laughs> and I don't break stride, which makes me um, just mad. A nice realization of like, I don't think you really appreciate how good a lookout is. Yeah. And whether or not that that person is really up for the job, because that first guy is always definitely supposed to be the lookout. But when he and saw he a, failed, he failed bad. Pretty he hard. He saw me like. coming and he was just like, I, I think his understanding of the job was, well, I see a guy. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to rule what I'm supposed to do with that information, but a dude is coming. This is why you don't make the lookout the guy who also likes to be caught. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Because yeah, yeah. then he's just like, oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Would you prefer yeah. if you were like, caca, caca? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, dude, you're fucking doing <laughs> I mean, like, I don't care that you're banging behind a dumpster, but I, uh. like, I hate when people don't do their jobs. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they were doing their jobs. The lookout guy was not. So this is about him being lazy, not about our unhoused brothers biffing each other. Which Man, is the, why they're behind the dumpster fucking in the first that, place. Because they're lazy. It, I don't know, man. Damn. Uh, Damn. Uh, Damn. Wait, we like to play they're this game called Lower the Bar. You like to play this <laughs> game. You, you, like, you brought the, this out of nowhere, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, listen. Yeah. Oh, you know what? It's punching down. It's you gotta Yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta I, go down, but you gotta punch down. You ever up. been to a mosh pit? People punch down all the time. Either way, I mean, I you are you are very technically by the one to one like computer logic correct. I guess. So wait, what, what was the last word? Correct. <laughs> logic. Either way, <laughs> wrong. Correct. 
That was the last word I said was logic. Nah, you said correct. I <laughs> <laughs> play the tapes, roll them back. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, I'm curious, yeah. what time of day was this? Uh, it was four o'clock. Four o'clock in the afternoon. It was afternoon. today. It was four o'clock oh, today. So, and uh, it was beautiful, beautiful weather today. today. It, was it, was sun, nice it was nice. It was today. pretty. Day. It was, it was yeah, breezy. Yeah, it was nice. Day. The sun was out. Pretty yeah, good you know. day for dumpster fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, if you're if you're down to bang behind a dumpster, it's not. It's, so that's a big bucket and not my fucking problem. So like, I like, I'm also like not like really like. There was nothing to be done about. It. I'm not exactly like pro call the cops on the hobos you know what i mean why would like, you like, yeah like if you're not bugging me like i'm not gonna bother you yeah you i don't know want what these mean? guys to die yeah like, exactly i'm just gonna let them i'd, I'd rather that okay here's yeah. the thing i am i would never call the police on a homeless person no i mean especially because these guys were uh not only homeless but also obviously gay and also black which is like the get shot by the cops trifecta Dude, that, yeah, you know yeah, that, I mean? that's the triforce so, of police brutality yeah yeah yeah. so i'm like yeah you guys just get to bang behind a dumpster and i'm just gonna like just don't just do it behind the dumpster that's my thing is like i'm not gonna call i'm not gonna call anybody on you but for real like just you know they were behind a dumpster. They I don't know if they the were in the wrong in this situation, to be honest. No, with it you. was just the thing that I saw today. It was like if I had seen um like a a, a blue crested kingfisher, I would have told you about that. But <laughs> yeah. I, or like a double rainbow. Or a double rainbow. I yeah. did I didn't see a double rainbow. I saw two dudes banging each other. That's like a that's kind that's of a, a double rainbow. It's a dirty double rainbow. You know what? I'm yeah, also yeah. gonna say dirty thank God rainbow. that <laughs> Sam took yeah. out the trash because Sam's coworkers are very attractive, but I would say very fragile women. I uh, yeah. They, yeah, I think they just don't want to see two dudes banging behind them steps. Yeah. Yeah. Like they wouldn't, I don't think they would have handled it in stride as I did. Yeah. I think I, they would have like, ah! yeah, I just, yeah, they would have been, they would have fainted like Victorian <laughs> seamstresses. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, oh, my. stop. <laughs> the, the girl who would have been taking out the dumpster to, or taking out the trash to the dumpster today is like a 21 year old, like 90 pounds soaking wet girl. So she just would Hell have been yeah. real upset about that. So I just, hit the, I just hit the group chat immediately. I was like, hey, maybe like nobody go to the dumpster anytime soon. And they're like, well, I might just trust me, man. <laughs> I was like, just, just don't. Just, just listen to your boy real quick. Yeah, yeah, I'm here to protect you. Please just don't go to the dumpster. And on today's bit, um, just like I had the SoundCloud corner where I did my hot rhymes, Joseph has a country song. Yeah, I do. Hold on. <laughs> you sure I do. realized that when I said it earlier, I fucked up the last two lines. So now I'm trying to remember it. Austin, you said you also had a country song. You go while I'm trying to. I do. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's called uh, Let Me Raise Them Kids. It's about uh, it's about a country man who uh, falls in love with a single mom and wants to raise them kids. I don't really have the lyrics, but. <laughs> that's the that's, but that's the premise. So, that, so you have the premise for a country song, <laughs> and it's like a premise for a wholesome country song. What's yeah, the fucking yeah, point? Right? Ew, gross. Ooh, it's wholesome, but there's well, some, there's some comedy for actually selling something that would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would go. Yeah, because I know fact, I I graduated with about 19 girls who would blast the shit out of that song. Oh yeah, for, yeah. Sure. like this is the man that I hey, want. Yeah. Let me raise them kids. Yeah, Jamie, I'm trying to make this money here. Like, no, I, yeah, like, I'm laughing yeah. that let me like raise them kids. Yeah, let me raise them kids. <laughs> Joseph and I, I, got, dude. I got a I got a girl who I constantly DM who I would say that to right now. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean like can't relate, but good for you. Yeah, dude. And she's uh, super hot. A, I bet her kid's fine. James and I are gonna <laughs> are, are gonna collab on that one. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna make us some fucking money, boys. <laughs> okay. We can make some fucking money. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, the 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 fucking the thing is let me raise them kids. And then it goes into like a whole nother Verse. I, no, mm -hmm. I know. I can. I can immediately think of five women off the top of my head who I know in person who would love that song. Well, but, get uh, ready, ladies. Get ready, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped them panties, but someone beat me to it. <laughs> Let me raise them kids <laughs> <laughs> along those lines. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. All I ask is a co-writing credit. Um, well, you know, I get in on this, man, for sure. And I'll get on yours. Oh we'll, yeah, we'll get on each other. Let's just get on each other's, yeah, man. Let's just fucking, let's just forget get, this podcast. Let's just get on <laughs> each other. Get on each other. <laughs> right. Let's just get on each other. Right. I know a really nice dumpster where you guys can do that. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the thing with Austin. If I was going to seduce him, I would take him out to a nice restaurant, and I would probably get like a good Airbnb with a hot tub. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think that's Working where so I far. Yeah, that's where I'd work you out first. Then we could work our way up to the dumpster. You know? Mm. Yeah, I, th I feel like that's like a nice like afternoon tryst. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, plus, that's like a nice spur. Of the I don't know that you fuck someone for the first time behind a dumpster. You know what I mean? 
I feel like you guys are familiar with each other at that point. I think when in if we're going by rules of the streets, if you live out in the wild, you bang where you can bang. Mm-hmm. I That's think fair. if you're a homed person, you don't get to just bang behind the dumpster. You have to earn yeah. that. That's not your space. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys remember? Do you guys Look, remember? You guys, um, we've as white men have gentrified enough. You know what I mean? You don't need to fucking start taking the behind the dumpster. Yeah, bang spots white people now. have gentrified so much that they've re-gentrified my neighborhood. These goddamn Californians keep moving in and raising my goddamn rent. Did mm-hmm. it come back around? What? Yeah. I, now gentrification's affecting me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I get, I'm what getting, the fuck? Yeah, I'm getting gentrified too. My fucking neighbor is moving. You know how much my neighbor's son is asked for? How much? Seven hundred fifty thousand. Fuck dollars. you! Dude, Come on, I'm man. I'm so fucking bad. I'm so Which bad. One? Dagan. Oh wow, he's moving, and I'm stuck with those three goddamn Stepford families. Yeah. <sighs> no, they're the worst. I yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna say too much about them on a recording, but fuck every single one of them <laughs> and their shitty kids. I, I can't. I can't with them. something. Something about a valley in the bedroom. You can call me step daddy. Oh, no. What do you think? Uh, yeah. No. Uh, no. Yeah. It's, got, it's got. It's got. It's got. There's something there. Yeah. I like step daddy a lot. He's not trying to bang them kids. He's trying to or raise them he? kids. He's not. Okay, he's not. No, yeah. we're selling the song. Oh, oh shit! Yeah, yeah, probably taking all the kid fucking parts. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, take me out. Don't, don't give me that credit. <laughs> yeah, that- yeah. For those of you who listen to this podcast, uh, the song "Let Me Raise Them Kids" is already copyrighted. So, like, is it really? Fuck off. <laughs> oh, yeah. It tra- is, yeah, uh, yeah tra- it's tra- Trashville. Right right yeah. Yeah. Okay. Trashville. Do we have a? Tra- can we do that? We can say that, right? Like, if I have a super awesome idea and I just say it, I'm like, trademark Trashville. Like, is that? I think you can say it, but I don't think no. Because it's like expensive and hard. Even I should back really to trademark pay attention more in my business law class. Like, yeah. I don't, what? I don't <laughs> Do you remember any of that? Huh? Can you help us with that? I could probably if I paid attention a little bit more. Yeah. God Fuck yeah. I, I, showed up to, I showed up to three episodes out of 45 and now I get money. This is sick. <laughs> this is shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, we're getting money for this? <laughs> for, for let me raise them kids. You oh, know, for, okay, kids. Sorry, I thought you meant that. for this. And I was like, wait, what? This one. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this will be the fourth goddamn stupid thing I've done. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, all right, well, let's launch in. <laughs> S- said that one hobo to the other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a through line. <laughs> okay, boys, we're doing a fun one today. Speaking of the police, we are going to be talking about Christopher Dorner. Christopher Jordan Dorner, born June 4th, 1979, died February 12th, 2013, was an ex-LAPD officer and former United States Navy reservist who was charged in connection with a series of shooting attacks on police officers and their families from February 3rd through 12th, uh, back in the good old days of 2013. Uh, The attacks left four people dead, including two police officers. Three police officers were wounded, and Dorner was the subject of one of the largest manhunts in LAPD history, which spanned two U.S. states and Mexico. Damn. Yeah. Now, before we get into all of that... Let's go through the man's personal history. So Dorner was born in 1979 in New York, but grew up in L.A. County, California. He attended elementary school at Norwalk Christian School from first to seventh grade. Uh, He stated in his published manifesto, which he released before he started all this, we'll get into the manifesto. Trust me, we will get into the manifesto. It is not what I would call always coherent. (laughs) Wait, the guy that decided to shoot all of his uh, co-workers? <laughs> really? Yeah, shocker. I know. <laughs> but it is also weirdly cogent at times. Like, it's very... Weirdly really what? Cogent. Like, very thoughtful and very, mm. like, weirdly linked together with, like, what appears to be a rational, reasonable, reasonable voice. But we're going to... You'll see. Yeah, we'll get there. So... In his manifesto, he stated that he was the only black person at this school, which for some of the California school systems, probably Mm -hmm. not a lot of them, but a couple of them. Yeah, especially behind the orange curtain. Uh, But he encountered uh, a lot of racial issues with his peers. Thank you. Uh, Was raised in neighborhoods with very little uh, uh, black populations to speak of. Um, He said he was frequently disciplined for being involved with fights and other students in response to racist name calling. Um, He talks about that a little bit in his manifesto, that he was very, very used to being called the N-word and very, very uh, used to choking the shit out of people for calling him that. Damn. He was very much a... I don't take shit off nobody kind of person. I'm probably with that so far. Yeah. 
Hang on, from he he was fighting from first to seventh grade. Not all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> he dropped them both. Fuck yeah, good for him, dude. But he he did. Um, there are some records of like principals like calling him into you know disciplinary meetings and saying basically, hey, you're fighting. And for each one of them, he always had like, yes, I was fighting. I did do this, but I did this because of this reason. Mm. And this is an a very interesting through line in Dorner's writings and in his life, he's very much a, he drops names like a, like a motherfucker. Like he is not afraid to call anybody out. He mm-hmm. will say everyone, which in the manifesto, he calls out a lot of LAPD and LASD Los Angeles Sheriff's department officers, all their names retracted, obviously, you know, yeah. They, yeah. they were going to do that. That wasn't a question of it, mm-hmm. but he, there are a lot of blank spaces in that manifesto because he does nothing but call people out specifically. Is that an Adele song? What, calling people out? No, Blank Spaces. That's a Taylor Swift song. Okay, sorry. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Learn something new about your Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> blank Spaces. Uh, so Dorner attended JFK High School in La Palma and Cypress High School in Cypress. Graduated in 1997. Uh, went to Southern Utah University in 2001, or graduated in 2001. A uh, major in political science and a minor in psychology. And we all know how well adjusted people with minors in psychology are. Yeah, that's right. I'm coming for you, psych students. <laughs> Just because your parents didn't love you and you don't understand why doesn't mean a bachelor's in psychology is going to help you understand why. What's really funny <laughs> is I'm staring at a book that says psychology right <laughs> mm-hmm. over there. You guys know who I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. There's a certain Apparently population in this house. <laughs> of psych students who are very, very, I am the master of my own brain's domain and are uh-huh. incapable of seeing outside of themselves. It's a weird oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Venn diagram of people who are like, <laughs> I know exactly how the brain works, but are it just un- unbelievably unable to look at themselves objectively. Yeah, no, which 100%. is kind of the point. You can't really do that. That's why they recommend not self-diagnosing yourself. Hmm. Anyway, that's sort of an aside. Yeah, 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 no. Um, yeah. I want to circle back to the, so he moved from a like a predominantly white, probably relatively racist. I mean, we're gathering so far mm-hmm. to Southern Utah University. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, dude. What? what Not why? Not exactly a step up. Yeah. Hey, so, man. You know what? You go to what you're used to. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Maybe he's like, I'm gonna lean real hard on this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm here for that. So graduates. Uh, goes into the Navy as a reservist, um, former Naval Reserve Lieutenant who was honorably discharged. Uh, was commissioned in 2002. Into which branch is that? The Army? The Navy. The Navy. Mm-hmm. Uh, commanded a security Cute. unit at Naval Air Station Fallon in Nevada. Uh, so served with a mobile inshore undersea warfare unit from... Is there, uh, is there a lot of sea in Nevada? I don't think so. I do. It's the Navy, but he went to Nevada? I guess they Not have a base there. Them, to be fair, he is also a reservist. You know, <laughs> you get to the actual water when you go. Active, you <laughs> Don't half in, half out. We're sending you to Nevada. Yeah, Call you, me you when get, you're serious. You get to sit in a rowboat in the desert and pretend to splash around, you fucking poser. <laughs> He was, uh, yeah, in the mobile inshore undersea warfare unit from June 23rd, 2004 to February 28th, 2006. There's, there's beaches in Nevada. In Nevada. Oh, yeah. good. There's Are they salt uh, beaches? Or are they like beaches beaches? Uh, looks, Do they touch the ocean? Looks like it. Las Vegas? Does not touch the ocean. Does not touch the ocean. Boulder Beach at Lake Mead? Nope. Not yet it doesn't. Mm, nice. No. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Suck it, polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid bitches. Nope. Yeah, no, no. I don't think there's any like no shoreline. ocean. No, no shoreline. The okay. closest thing is is Mandalay Beach, which is a, a very big pool, essentially. Doesn't make sense to put a fucking Navy base there. I know. No, Navy, it th- still doesn't make sense. There's a Navy base in Memphis, too. So that's true. Yeah. Fucking Navy. Man. <laughs> fucking Navy. Dude. They really forget where they're supposed to be, man. Be looking for the aliens underwater. Stop build, building bases in Nevada. Well, that's what I'm if you think about it, guys, all Air Force bases on the ground. So, I mean, like, that you know of. You <laughs> Shut fucking the fuck up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> fucking sheep. <laughs> You're really thinking outside the box today, man. I love it. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, 
Dorner was again deployed in Bahrain with uh, Coastal Riverline Group 2 uh, from 2006 to 2007 and then dishonorably discharged from the reserve uh, completely on February 1st, 2013, after he was fired from the LAPD office, which we'll get into. Um, this is a little random aside, but this is something I thought was interesting. He Okay, I'll tell you what happened, and I'll tell you his perspective on it. So in 2002, Dorner and uh, one of his, I guess, classmates like in the Naval like Academy found a bag containing nearly $8,000, like just bag tight, of cash. Tight, tight, tight. Bag of cash. I dream of I'm that talking every day. Like, right? Like no country for old men style. Like, yeah, 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 which, yeah. come on, you're not going to not take it. No, I'm going to take that every You're taking that day. bag every time. Every yeah. single fucking time I take that. I put it in my <laughs> truck and I say nothing to no one. And you, yeah, you never, you don't ever. Never ever. say anything to anybody. Yeah. Even like if you're married, like, like nope. me or what? No, you just, <laughs> you know what you do? You just like every once in a while, get her a little something. And she's like, oh, you didn't have to do that. And it's like, no, nah, it's cool. I got yeah. you. No, I, I did you. have to pay that in cash and break up those hundred dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> I need to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Cause that's what you do. I real quick. If you get a hundred dollars, you can't put in that fucking to bank. You can't put that bank. That hundred. The, all those, all that money, that's your spending money forever. You keep working your jobs, so you have money in the bank. Those hundreds, you just re- slow burn through those for the mm-hmm. rest of your fucking life. You don't quit your job automatically. No, you don't no. make yourself That is like- the most Italian thing I've heard you say <laughs> in a long time. You just have a stash of hundred dollar yeah, bills no, you for keep, the rest of your you adult keep it life. In, in your car, you keep it in your house for the rest of your fucking life because you, like I said, you can't do, because if you just go somewhere and you buy something with a bunch of fucking hundred dollar bills, people are going to like be like, well, they're like, going to remember that. They're going to remember that and all also, like they have to deposit that and they'll be like, wow, these are all sequential hundred dollar bills. That's fucking weird. Where'd you get these from? People are going to notice. So that way, <laughs> that's just your spending money. You go to the gas station, you be- you pay with a hundred dollar bill. They break that up. Uh-huh, that's true. That's good. Okay, okay. So I will say the moral of no country for old men, like as soon as I saw it, I would say the moral is if you find a bag of cash, take the cash, leave the bag. Because the whole thing could have been avoided if he would have just had like his own little satchel. Yeah. And just picked all the money out and then like, oh, look, a tracker. Yeah. Boom. He would have walked up. Like that movie would have been like five minutes long. I yeah. got to say. If he yeah. would have just done that. If yeah. you do find a big bag of money, you don't want to rip it open right away because there might be like one of those little paint bombs in there. Uh-huh. You know what True. I'm talking about? Yeah. But at some point before you get to your house, before you get to where you lay your head down, cut the bottom of the bag open and check it. Yeah. Or put it in a different bag. Put it in, yeah, different bag. Same, you know what I mean? Different fucking put bag. it in a different bag immediately. Make sure there's nothing on there. Flip through the bills. You don't got to count it all right then. Don't be an asshole. No, Just no, flip no, through. No. Make sure there's nothing foreign or weird on there. A little like tie clip that's actually a goddamn CIA tracking device. Chuck that shit into the Cumberland. Keep on fucking trucking, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Anyway, that's what Chris Dorner should have done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Life advice from the trash field. <laughs> also, uh, the real hero of No Country, no country for Old Men. That gas station attendant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the only guy that didn't die. He's just a fucking old man working at a gas station. Yeah, he's just doing his thing. Also, that that's the only reason I think Javier Bardem's character was an asshole. That's because he just made fun of a guy who worked in a gas station. I know. All that jobs just, are jobs. That was just rude. Yeah. <laughs> What's your problem, dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, he, ma- he married into working at a gas station, so... Yeah, he's not looking married- at you like, oh, I'm some big-time assassin, but but You got you you know? a stupid fucking haircut, Javier Bardem. Look at yeah. that fucking thing. All right. <laughs> like an Easter Island head with a fucking toupee on it, man. Fucking so up. true. <laughs> fucking big jawed bitch. I don't know. I think the the choking the guy with like the handcuffs, that was That was pretty cool. He, yeah, he was a cop. Yeah, but like do you gotta go out like that? Why like every hey, man, other like You mur- take the job. Every other murder in that is like, you know, quick and painless. Like he has a silent shotgun. Boom. You're dead. Yeah, well, and then he has that, the, the, the cow killing thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a great way to that go. That was pretty cool. That was cool. Like quick, painless. You don't even know what's going on and you're dead. Yeah. yeah. He was nut pretty genius. in that scene too. You remember the smile when he's choking that guy? Yeah. Guy? yeah. yeah. Nutting. Nutting. He had to steal that guy's pants too. So he's so full of nut. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so if maybe if Dorner had just taken the $8,000... He could have lived a happy life and wouldn't have, uh, you know, been driven to kill all these caps. But he didn't. Uh, it had belonged to Enid Korean Church of Grace in Enid, Oklahoma. Uh, they turned it into the police. And when asked about it, Dorner said it's an integrity thing. The military stresses integrity. Uh, said if people are willing to give to a church, it must be pretty important to them. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's re- it's blogged. It's true. It really happened. Wow. And he cites that in his manifesto. He He's very big on personal honor. And his whole thing is that I am a man of integrity. I have been driven to this. But right, that is right, kind right. of bearing the lead. We'll get, we'll, get, we'll get to that. 
This is when the LAPD career starts. He joins the LAPD in 2005 after completing police academy training in 2006. He has his training officer, Teresa Evans, who is now a sergeant in the LAPD. On July 28th, 2007, he and his training officer go to the Doubletree Hotel in San Pedro regarding a mentally ill man, Christopher Gettler, who was uh, causing a disturbance. Two weeks later, uh, Evans gave Dorner a performance review that stated he needed to improve in three areas, and the next day, Dorner filed a report alleging that Evans had used, an excessive, had used excessive force in her treatment of Christopher Gettler, accused her of kicking him twice in the face while he was handcuffed and lying on the ground. Pretty standard stuff you hear about police officers. Yeah, rude. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, can we just point out, like, yeah, he's a man of integrity. Like, I, I can... He's, he claims to be. He, can, did one, he's, he did one good thing. Right. I, I, I'm just saying, like, if you are truly a man of integrity, would you really join, like, quite possibly the most corrupt force in the entire United States? That, see... Well, it, at the time, uh, what... Oh, hold on. Wait, also, side question. was You said there was another guy there with who found the money with him right yes so it yeah, is possible that guy turned in the money what are you <laughs> the other guy was like chris we can't keep this money and, and donor is like don't be a fucking dork dude we gotta keep this money <laughs> fuck the church <laughs> yeah fuck the church fuck the church then we keep this money that is very possible now i will say just to your note mm-hmm. this is a weird guy <laughs> this is just so weird i'm, I'm willing guy. to go on record and say donor is not a stellar example of a person also, side note, if you're with a person when you find the $8,000, you have to split it in half and you never speak to that person ever again. You move, you don't, <laughs> because there's going to be some point, either you or them spend all your money. They spend it in a dumb way. You can no longer be that person. You either decide right then and there that you murder them or you never speak to them again. <laughs> you can't be friends with that person anymore. Done. No touch. Babe, we have to start a new off. life. Uh, with what money? Don't worry. I've got $4,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the no, hell is no, wrong you? With just you? stop being friends with them. You just stop being friends. Why are you saying move out? Out of town. I, I didn't say move out of town. When did I say move out of town? I just said all cut, cut off communication with that person. <laughs> They're not your friend anymore. So kind of going off the whole, like, why would you even join the LAPD? Yeah. He doesn't really ever say why I became a cop, but just reading from his manifesto, this is a man who really believes in the system as it should work. Like this guy would play lawful good in D and D. Like he is very much like the rules exist for a reason. It's the worst character. I know. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah. He's a paladin through and through, and he's going to be a dick about it. Don't, ugh, don't play he's going to be a dick about I'm playing, it. I'm playing, <laughs> I'm playing a great paladin right now who's law, who's chaotic good. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, if you get, well, if you get some homebrew stuff on a paladin, they're a great class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you can't be the uptight, oh, well, you guys are having premarital sex, and that makes my god angry, and that's the <laughs> god that gives me power, so I need you guys to chill out, okay? Yeah. Can't be doing this shit. Unless you played as like Patrick Warburton, then it's kind of fun. Yeah, then I guess it's hey, okay. uh, I'm here for my uh, lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the big guy. Yeah, sorry I'm, uh, about this. I'm going to have to hit you with the hammer now. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Paladin Warburton. <laughs> Paladin <laughs> Warburton. Hell yeah. Uh, but he he is very much a America is the greatest country on the planet, mm. and it could. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. <laughs> in, his, in his manifesto, which I reiterate, was released prior to killing four people. He specifically calls out the movie The Hangover 3 <laughs> and says that he's upset he won't be able to see it. Wow. That he's going to miss Shark Week. Says, Hillary Clinton, I wish I could see you in the White House in 2016. Boo, it's his fault. <laughs> it's his no, fault. I was reading it's and I was like, fault. well, what the fuck? And like, he actually says, hey, Mrs. Obama, love the new bangs, by the way. And then in the next sentence says, also, I didn't vote for Obama because I'm not a fucking idiot. What? This man is all over the place. <laughs> and he, he's guy. flirting with Michelle. I'm like, I didn't vote for your shit husband. <laughs> he might, what up, baby? <laughs> he might, he might, might be mentally ill. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. Dude, that, no, hang on. Let's just hold up on, on like shitting on, like you're talking to a girl, shit on her husband. Be like, what's up, baby? You looking good today. It's like them bangs. I do that shit all the time. What are you fucking talking about? I love talking about my friend's scrub ass boyfriend. Now, so Dorner makes the report, right? 
Uh, Internal Review Board investigated these claims and listened to the testimony of several witnesses. Uh, Christopher Gettler, the man who was, uh, they called the mental illness check on, his father testified that his son returned home, face was puffy, and his son claimed that he was kicked by a police officer. Um, His father said he did not report this to the police because the injury was minor and his son was unable to explain why he had been kicked, which I could kind of see your mentally ill son comes home and you're just glad he's home, even if he has a big boot print on his face. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I expect my future children to come home often with big brute prints on their face. Right. If you, they, that's just like Tuesday. If they get my mouth, they're going to come home with boot prints <laughs> on their face. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's learning. I mean, what's he supposed to do? It's like, yeah, the cops beat my son up, so I called the cops. Like, what? Right. That's the thing is if you're, if, and I, thank you, because I was going to say something similar is that <laughs> if your son comes home and says, yeah, the cops beat the shit out of me, you're probably not going to call the cops immediately. And be like, <laughs> What's this? My son says you guys were roughhousing with him. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, you call that gray haired guy from Law and Order SVU. Yeah. The internal affairs guy. Yeah. The best character. Yeah. Just like, come back over here. You want this ass whooping? I'll bring it. Now, <laughs> Gettler claimed that he'd been kicked by a female officer, you know, who, which was allegedly what happened. Um, he did describe her as almost black with dark hair. Now, Evans is white with blonde hair. He then partially corrected himself, saying that she had light hair and that he thought his injuries had been caused by a club. Now, Gettler is a diagnosed schizophrenic with severe dementia. So you can make of that what you will. Because obviously just because someone's mentally ill doesn't mean that everything they say is like, Swiss cheese filled with holes. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It also, but you also don't want to say that someone with a severe mental illness, same as having cancer, it's a severe illness, is always going to be uh, completely uh, accurate in what they report. Memory is, of course, an extremely subjective thing and has been shown by experts to be not at all like a photograph. Yep. Yeah. Um, three witnesses, uh, including two hotel employees and a port police officer testified that they did not see Evans, the woman, his training officer, kick Christopher Gettler. She also denied kicking him. Um, there is a little part of that where the port police officer in his statement had mentioned that Chris Dorner was wearing a tie at the time. And Dorner, again, this is another small detail that is in the record is that he was not wearing the uniform. I forget which uniform it is, but he wasn't wearing a uniform that included a tie. Mm-hmm. He grabbed onto that as evidence of this motherfucker line. Again, you can make of that what you will. There are a lot of inconsistencies. However, the board's three members, two LAPD captains and a criminal defense attorney, uh, attorney unanimously ruled against Dorner. They found that his claims lacked credibility and that he was motivated in part by his fear that his training officer would give him a poor evaluation that could end his re- career. And as a result, Dorner's employment was terminated. Uh, Hang on. So, like, in, in training, he was fired. Well, he had graduated police training. This was a little bit afterwards. Now, it is common practice. Sorry, so just to clarify, he was, he was fired because his co-worker... He was fired for what the LAPD claimed was making a false uh, uh, statement slash compl- filing a false complaint against a fellow officer is what they said he did. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because, like, the kid, or he said that the kid got beat. Yeah, by he the- said the kid was beaten while he was handcuffed. Kid said, I was beaten while I was handcuffed. Said, described her incorrectly, then corrected himself a little bit. Uh, guy's father said that that's what happened. Uh, three witnesses on the scene. And of course, all the other police officers said, no, that didn't happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, I'm conflicted. Now, this is just a, a minor thing I'm just going to throw out there is that Teresa Evans is currently engaged in a lawsuit with the LAPD. Um, this is, of course, after the fact, after the manhunt, after the murders and everything. Uh, she claims that uh, essentially because she was his training officer and because she had the most interaction with him prior to him being terminated, that she was unfairly uh, essentially just under promoted, given shit assignments, which probably, you yeah, know, yeah, for sure. I'm not saying she didn't kick that homeless dude in the face. Yeah. But yeah, I 100 percent could see that. I could not find anywhere. I'm not joking when I say I could not find anywhere the status of this lawsuit how, how, if it had been reviewed yet, how many times it had been appealed, what the damages she was seeking were. She's still working for the LAPD. So I imagine a lot of this is pretty tightly under wraps. Yeah. Yeah. 
What an awkward uh, workplace situation that must be. Yeah. Like, if I, imagine if I sued my my barbershop and then I just kept showing up to work at my barbershop. Well, because, shop. like, if you sue, uh, in most states at least, if you sue your employer, your employer can't fire you on the spot. Because if they fire you, then it shows conflict of interest. Yeah. Like, trying to get you I out mean, of like, it. I don't think I'd want to work at a place where I'm suing them. You should sue Dan for fun and find out. All right. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Fucking coming for you, Dan. <laughs> Especially if like you're a state employee. It ha- actually there's a comedian in Nashville, um, oh, yeah. uh, who is also a fireman. And I think it was like last year during the pandemic, he called like some higher up. Um, he called them like racist or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, in his own personal Twitter. And if I remember correctly, they they fired him. No, I thought they suspended him. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. He won that lawsuit. Yeah, he won the lawsuit. They, I think it was like for 750 k Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. He could buy my wow. neighbor's house. What? He could buy my neighbor's oh. house. Yeah, he could. Oh, shit. God willing. You know who you are, dude. Please be my neighbor. <laughs> Sorry. I just, no. I, I, want, I just want somebody cool to live I just want someone who's not a Stepford wife God, in my, I just, in my I, neighborhood. It's, it's okay. I, I know this is a diverge, but you, I need you to appreciate it. It's every three of those couples look exactly the same. Dopey. They All the husbands look like Austin. So just dopey, <laughs> tall, brunette dudes. And then all their wives are bleach blonde. And it's just, it's creepy. Sorry. Continue yeah. with your story. No, I, <laughs> now that you got me on it, I would like to say, I would like families to stop moving into my neighborhood because yeah. their kids always want to play with the dogs. I'm usually high while I'm walking my dogs and ignoring <laughs> everything around me. Sam, you know this because yeah. you've driven by me. Uh, hilarious. Your ability to not notice things is fucking <laughs> Sam has literally like stopped in the street to wave at me I while s- driving by. Not in the street, directly next to you. I, w- I was going 40 down the street, stopped within 30 feet of you quickly. So I stopped quickly, directly next to you, looked at you as close as we are now, and you just kept on walking. <laughs> Dude, I, it was that. I slammed on Joseph, my, what's up? And, and just, <laughs> do, 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 do. This is what you needed when you were taking out the trash. My ability to not get involved. Yeah. Not get involved. Hey, I didn't get involved. Uh, my eyes were in my boat, all right? Like, I saw that. I said, not my fucking life, and I continued. Now, I, I know I said that Dorner has this habit of pointing out small, very small, but to him seemingly vital inconsistencies in the department's story versus his version of the events. And I know we've all done research. We're all children of the X-Files era and all that stuff. I think most of us know. Hell yeah. I think most hell of yeah. us know. He does kind of. Side note again. Side note from the side note. Dorner does kind of portray himself almost like Fox Mulder. He, he just, eat a dick. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I listen, no, I'm just no, saying not you, not you, no, no, no. him. You're that, not Fox. It's crazy. You know you're not Fox. While I was reading it, I was like, this man truly is like painting himself as like, everyone's watching. The government is aware of what you're doing. They will fucking kill you. And I'm the last honest man in this department and I will make it known. Fucking chill out, bro. It's like, I'm, yeah, I'm wearing a white tank top and jeans, but I know it don't look like Stanley Tucci when he was young. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, do you you're know who you are? Than young Tucci. Don't. Uh, how dare you? I get, to me, you're, I get you're your, always going to be better. I get than you're trying Tucci. to be nice without. You're being disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> to Tucci. <laughs> to Tucci. <laughs> sorry, Tucci. Yeah. So, fucking, sorry, don't, Tucci. Don't you Shout ever, out Tucci gang. Don't you ever fucking disrespect the Tucci in front of me. Tucci. <laughs> 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 fucking Italian over here. Are you wearing track pants right now? What are you? No, I'm wearing jeans. Okay. Sorry. Some blue jeans. Okay. I'm wearing blue jeans. Sam's Italian and he's fucking wearing. Gold chain. He's all like sun kissed right now. He's looking great, but he fucking <laughs> looks like play. such a guido. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Fuck off. Dude. This is just how I am. All right. <laughs> Fuck just, you. This is how I dress all the time. This is how I always dress. The, I mean, the shirt is like the, the shirt I was wearing over top of the thing doesn't really help my cause either. This is super Italian dad as well. It's mm-hmm. a fantastic shirt. Thank yeah, you. that's a like. That's a Tony Soprano shirt. This, this yeah, is, it really is. Yo, man, I think my I got this at Google. I think my dad like wore this. Your dad like, donated like that shirt has to this. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow it ended up three states away in my Goodwill. I'm like, man, I fucking think my dad owned this while he was barbecuing. Dude, that sounds like a fucking indie movie. 
the t- like a t- early two thousands, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. indie movie where you're just like, I never knew that this shirt would bring me back to my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. that'd be great. Back when Italians were like, for some reason, still thought they had to fight for their place in the world. It's like fucking chill out. We're the fine. anti-defamation league for Italians. Speak up, man. Yeah. The Mario movie's coming out, making us look like a bunch of assholes. Yo, I'm fucking. I was legitimately pissed about that for the fucking second. I don't. I don't want to get there. not a not a single Italian dude in the fucking whole movie. Not a single Italian guy. You know, and also. Luca, one Italian guy, and he was the shitty little kid on the moped. Jim Gaffigan was the dead. All right, sorry. <laughs> That's a release his manifesto. Man. <laughs> God, I'm so mad about it. So we all know when there are breaks in the official story, whether it's due to incompetence, lying, or just a good old American fuck up, they breed conspiracy theorists. They breed doubt. And that is where he sort of lays the groundwork of why I'm doing this. He had an appeal. He appealed, I think, he appealed to basically three courts. Lost the first appeal, took it to the second appellate district, lost that one, took it again, lost. All the way around. Just to get his job back? He he was basically saying, he was like, "I, I did not lie. I do not lie. I never lie. You will hire me back. He really, really wanted to be a cop. (laughs) Man. (laughs) <laughs> and they Yikes. Did, they did not want him on the <laughs> no. on the team, man. I, I think like being a cop should be like being the Pope. Like if you want the job, you're not allowed to have it. <laughs> that seems fair. Yeah. I'll say that's fair. Yeah. Can we do that with uh, the presidency? Too? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's, hang on. I really like the idea like of treating right. cop duty like jury duty, like how they did Grant. Mm-hmm. Like it like if you want it, you can't have it. Yeah. And if you don't want it, you have to job. have it. You yeah. have to do it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to do it. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, bummer, bro. <laughs> Enjoy the twelve dollars a day and this half a bologna sandwich you get paid to do this. <laughs> now, shortly after his final appeal failed in uh February seventh, I believe, he uh released a manifesto online where he claimed that he would bring asymmetrical and unconventional warfare to the LAPD. <laughs> He, now, hang on, he, he he said that online. He said that online. He released it on Facebook, and it just fucking of course bloomed it was from, from there. <laughs> Imagine wow, being like yeah. his high school buddy, or like you were the guy like who beat him up in high school, or he beat you up, and he's like, oh, I wonder what Chris is doing. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, he said that to his bullies in second grade. I'm going to bring asymmetrical <laughs> warfare if you talk about my mom's ass one more time. Um, asymmetrical? <laughs> what was the whole, that, that was the whole and phrase? Unconventional. A- it's asymmetrical and unconventional warfare, which awesome. is technically a spec ops tagline. That is what they teach you to do yeah. in special operations. Is essentially like, you know, used to be you have one army. They want to take a city. There's an army holding that city. You got to kill those dudes to take that city. <laughs> the whole point of the special ops people is asymmetrical and unconventional warfare. It starts from the uh, the people who inspired the Inglorious Bastards, uh-huh. Tarantino's movie, oh, it, was the, the commandos in uh, occupied Britain and occupied European uh, territories during World War II is they would blow up train tracks. They would just sneak into people's camps and they would just like find whoever was the highest leader that they could slit his throat while he was sleeping and just leave. You know, they would do things. That's, that's badass. Really? It is badass. Fucking tight, See, they would do things inspired to bring terror to people. Like Chaos. to do th- the kinds of things where you lit- you cannot foresee it happening. It's what smaller insurgent groups have done to larger armies throughout history. The We did it to the Redcoats during the War for Independence. Yeah. <laughs> America. <laughs> the Mujahideen did it against Soviet troops. The then they turned around and did it to us as ISIS. They did it in Iraq. They have done it since warfare has essentially been a thing. You- the Vietnam. I mean, hell, the uh, NCs. They they knew there was absolutely no way in a straight up war that they could take the United States military. Especially, right. it wasn't as bloated as it was then. But by seventy standards, it was still pretty fucking bloated. You yeah. know, the military budget. So what do you do? You just have a bunch of people that are in your jungle. You you fucking dig out a pit you put some spikes on it cover them and shit and one unlucky dude steps into it right maybe that's the only one for fucking five quarter miles around you they don't know that all they know is that fucking johnson over there was talking about his girl back home and making jokes now suddenly he's got shit foot and they're gonna have to cut it off and they're gonna have to fucking walk this motherfucker through the jungle on a stretcher now you've just occupied four more guys who have to take care of him or however many it's all about 
fear. And that is Dorner's manifesto writ large is that besides the hangover three references, like he <laughs> bounces from what I, w- I almost want to say silly to some so, seriously, some of the most like hardcore call outs I think I've read in a while. I think I've had a, I've had a conversation with a guy like this before. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. you're, it's like you're sitting at the, it's, it's that dude at the bar who like, once you get him going, it's just nonsensical ramblings mm-hmm. and you're just trapped there until somebody distracts him and then you can sneak away. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know exactly. Yeah, There's yeah, this yeah, one yeah, guy yeah. that tried to talk to me for hours about how Baron Trump was a time traveler. No yeah. joke. That's yeah. a hard one. No That's joke. a hard one to talk about. And he was telling me that there were aliens flying around in his backyard. He showed me videos and I was just like, I think my favorite one that I've, I've encountered is this guy. <clears throat> Luckily I was the bartender and he was like just a, you know, just a guy at the bar and he was convinced that nothing had gotten better since the eighties, like technology wise. It was just like, we have reached our peak, the eighties. We like, we did everything. I was like, what about computers? What about like smartphones? <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, not true. We had those in the eighties. They just didn't tell us about it. And I was just like, I don't. But even if that's true, <laughs> now we have them. Yeah. And so that's objectively better. And they're so easily acceptable, uh, accessible. Yeah. So yeah. like, I, I remember I just like looked at him like, I'm very like, I, is this a bit like, are you yeah. messing with me? Right Homeless now? people have smartphones. Yeah. People in in prison have smartphones. Hell yeah, they do. Dude, those are the best video. That's the best content. Three year olds have smartphones. I, I don't know. And if know how to operate. Those TikToks of people. So, in prison. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Rule. They rule. Yes. Right. Did. Not to mention we have like electric cars now. Isn't that wild. We need flying cars. We need to bring that. It's in. coming. We were supposed to have those a while ago. It's yeah. coming. I don't know. I don't think is. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know if we're gonna last long enough for flying are you, cars. Are you? Uh, you see how we drive on roads? Yeah, that's what my you want to put that all in the sky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to be I, honest, the only way flying cars would work, I think, is if they were completely automated and ran like because nothing you you could not thank you. You could not trust traffic flow in the sky with no, the assholes we have driving no, around. No. And they're never gonna make a successful automated vehicle, at least until Elon Musk finally fucking dies and lets someone else try take a swing at it. You know, I <laughs> I wanna, I wanna punch him in his belly. Yeah. I want one good liver shot. He's a Damn. fucking dick. Bob. Bow. You know how much of a dick you have to be for you to get thrown down the stairs as a child by another kid and for your, your dad to be like, no, nah, he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be me to my kid when he comes home with the boot on his face. Yeah, I'm like, like, you what'd prop- you say? Yeah, what'd you say? Why did they do that to you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me right now. Oh, okay. well, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. I did that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sounds like something I'd say. All right, put some ice on it. You'd be, be surprised okay. on, on how much you learn just by being punched in the face. That's what I'm time. saying. I like, I'd say it a lot. You like, yeah. you, it's, occasionally you just need to get punched in the mouth like one time and it's it's you it's always the people you can you can tell somebody who's never been punched in the face too you can because yeah because they like to poke and they like to poke and they like to poke and they they, they don't you've know never found stop. the end of that poke right you know mm-hmm. I mean? right i think I was, I was talking about about morgan wallen the other day and i kept saying he needed he just never got jacked in the jaw for saying the n-word real loud in the middle of the street and i think it just yeah he need, he needs it yeah. like for the like i'm sure he's a fine kid right I think, uh, yeah. but uh, he just. He, he, but you he, need a good clocking just to just to. Oh, that's why I don't say it. Oh. Yeah, just yeah. to kind of remind oh. you that it's yeah. like oh. you know what this right. is yeah. other people's <laughs> planet too, and yeah. I can't be a total fucking cunt about yeah. it. Yeah, 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 you yeah, associate yeah. your bad behavior with pain, and then you don't do it again. Yeah, yeah, right. You learn some shame. Shame yeah. is good shame in some good. ways. Shame is sexy. Shame can be sexy. Mm. You want to hear something not sexy? Yes. On February 3rd, 2013. <laughs> Smooth as Smooth, ice. baby. Damn. <laughs> Joey transitions over here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, that butter silk. <laughs> On February 3rd, 2013, Monica Kwan, age 28, and her fiance, Keith Lawrence, age 27, were found shot to death in an Irvine parking garage. Monica Kwan was the daughter of former LAPD Captain Randall Kwan, who had represented Dorner in his disciplinary case that resulted in his termination. In a Facebook post attributed to Dorner, he warned Kwan specifically of deadly consequences for you and your family. And uh, he followed through. That was the guy defending him? That was the guy who defended him, yes. Which you'd think he might be like, eh, he gave it a shot. He at least defended me, you know? Anyway, in the wake of the Quan Lawrence shooting and the posting of his manifesto, law enforcement mounted a widespread manhunt for Dorner that spread from California to include Nevada and Mexico. I'm going to walk you guys through just a little bit of the uh, timeline, um, if you guys are ready for it. 
This is this is the buildup. February 1st, Anderson Cooper of CNN fame receives a package at his office containing a DVD that states Dorner's case against the LAPD. True detective style. Nice. Mails off all the shit. The package also contained a bullet-ridden challenge coin issued by LAPD Chief William Bratton and a note inscribed with one MOA, one minute of angle, which implies that the coin was shot at 100 meters away. Uh, okay, okay. Which is not... One minute of angle? One minute of angle. It's like a, it's a nice. fucking military term. Yeah, it's yeah. also what uh, it's my also, situation yes, says to me. Pow. <laughs> 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 She says, hey, Sam, you busy? I want to come over for that one minute of angle. <laughs> I'll give you that. That's great. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, February 3rd, Monica Kwan and her fiance found dead. Um, February 4th, the man. Manifest- Dude, the fiance was killed? Yeah, the, the guy who defended what? her daughter and her daughter's fiance both shot. You just had so much outrage <laughs> for the, and you didn't bat an eyelash for the poor woman a minute okay, ago. The, the poor woman, like I get in his head, it makes sense. In his sense. head, he's like, she's a target because she's associated with this guy. Yeah. But he also killed her fiance, which is a dick move. They were probably together. If you think about it. Yeah. But he also did. Good job, to- Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Good detective why. work. Fuck yeah. yeah. What am I doing? Lumbo. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, Nashville PD, if you need somebody. <laughs> I got a guy. He's fucking incredible. You probably killed him because he was laying next to her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Austin. Uh, February 4th, the manifesto is published online. <laughs> <laughs> Riddled with bullets. I think they used you, a gun. <laughs> You're the one over here confused why he killed the fiance. I'm like, he was likely the guy. <laughs> I'm not confused. I'm just saying it's a dick move. It is, but then no, no strings attached, my friend. If you find eight thousand dollars with another person, you have to kill that other you person. You have to kill the other person. I don't make the rules. <laughs> February 4th, he publishes his manifesto. Says specifically, I will not be alive to see my name cleared. That's what this is about, my name. He lays out specific targets, uh, Randall Kwan and his family included. So, obviously, Irvine police names Dorner as the primary suspect in the murders of Monica Kwan and Keith Lawrence, which probably one of Austin's like distant cousins in California was like, you know, I bet he did it. <laughs> <laughs> I got no fucking cousins. In ca- actually, I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> you say that so harshly. I bet you'd love Orange County. I probably would. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Orange County probably wouldn't love me though. No, I bet uh, or you, 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 they or might, you'd like, they Orange, might County. like you. Orange County. You'd be fine. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. He's insulting you, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying he'd like it there. It's close to LA. Great going for auditions. California to a girl that's never been born. Oh, no. Uh, Manifesto said that Quan had failed to represent his interests in favor of those of the department. Um, reported specific acts of specific officers participating in the retaliation, but their names have been redacted by media sources at the request of law enforcement, obviously, who cited officer safety concerns, which... I'll I'll bring this up later. I got another thing that's actually happening right now um, by the LAPD and Chief Moore. Um, in this situation where a man is actively saying that uh, civilians do not render medical aid to these pigs, they would never do the same for you. They view you as overtime and just, you know, funny things to talk about in their, you know, in their group texts. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically says, do not weep for these fallen officers. They are tyrants against justice and truth. And hold on. Now I'm just going to have to find it because this is this is something that I was just like, holy shit. This is what Dorner said? This, this is something from his manifesto. I'm going to find it. Do you it. have the whole manifesto right here? I, I, I copied and pasted it off the internet because I wanted to read it because I, I wanted to see like what the what he's talking about. And it's a... It's, How fucking long is this goddamn thing? It's like, there's like an 11-page version. There's like a 30-page version. I read both... In the 30 page version, let me say, someone could have used an editor. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the, I want to meet the person who, who chose to edit down a 30 page manifesto to an 11 page manifesto. And he was like, no, nah, these, this rambling needs to stay in. But this rambling is, ex- it's 
too much. Hangover one, quite possibly the best comedy that's ever existed. Like I can just take this out. <laughs> so out. Hangover three stuff, we'll leave that. <laughs> that is gold. He, he goes from uh, saying he, from specifically speaking to the children of the police officers that he is intending to kill. Um, that he says, do not weep for your parents. You know, they're, you know, agents of the government. They will fucking like, well, he didn't say agents of the government. He says they're agents of like basically liars. They are racist. They are monsters. They're, and then he says well, to the family of pe- anyone who loses some, loses someone to his man, to his rampage, he says, look your wives, husbands and surviving children directly in the face and tell them the truth as to why your children are dead. God hey, damn. Me. He then quotes Thomas Jefferson of all people. That okay. when it says the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriot of patriots and tyrants. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said that, dude. Thomas Jefferson, oh, yeah. was metal, racist, but metal. I I don't know. He really. <laughs> oh wait, no. Yeah, never mind. He had lots of illegitimate. He Ill- raped a lot of slaves. I, I was thinking, yeah, he, yeah, he stole slaves. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm staying by. I'll stand by my statement. Uh, he specifically calls out to other law enforcement agencies besides LAPD and the sheriff's department says for all other agencies, do not involve yourself in the capture or recovery of me. Look at the big picture of the situation. They LAPD created the situation. I will harm no outside agency unless it is a deadly force in defense of life situation with today's budgeting and fiscal mess. You guys cannot afford to lose several officers to me. Plus, wow. other officers should not have to take on the additional duties and responsibilities of dead officers. Think about their families, outside agencies, chiefs and directors. And then... Did they take his word for it? Did they well, to leave him alone? No, there were, there were quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> but li- li- listen, <laughs> think before you attempt to intervene. You will not survive. Your family will receive that Medal of Valor posthumously. It will gather dust on the fireplace mantle for years. Then one day it will go in a shoebox with other memories. Damn. Your mother will lose a son or daughter. Your significant other will be left alone, but they will find someone else to fill your void in the future and make them just as happy. This guy's brutal. Your children, if you have them, will call someone else mommy or daddy. Don't be selfish. Your vest is only a level two (laughs) or three A, which is grades of Kevlar. (laughs) Think about it. <laughs> that is terrifying. Dude, I think he should have not tried to get in the LAPD. He should have been like a uh, like a lyricist, a serial for a metal... killer. No, <laughs> he should have been like, uh, uh, like yeah. He should have been a gangster uh, rap lyric. Yeah, either like something. gangster rap or yeah. metal. Just well, a waste the... of talent over here. I'm <laughs> telling yeah. you, man, you really should have been a Batman level supervillain. Is what you should have been. <laughs> but being a cop, you should have been the Penguin. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, he should have. He should be making music because that's like fucking shit. I want to listen to oh, when I, I work out, bad. dude. Right? That's all I could think about was just like some band, like Eviscerator, being like, "Someone else will call your fu- call them mommy, daddy." You yeah, know, like, like, dude, that's crazy. <laughs> but so, you, well, you know what it does? In, in all seriousness, it, it reminds me of um, who was that woman um, in World War II? She was like, it was like a Japanese propaganda thing that they would do. It was like they would whenever they were like. Um, uh, it, it was like it was either over the radios or they would play it really loud, like while they're marching over islands and stuff like that. Like Rose, like the Japanese Rose or something like that is what they called her. Like just like yeah. really, really seductive uh, female voice would just say essentially stuff like that to like World War II soldiers. Damn. Yeah. Like they like, would broadcast it over. I'm like, it's not worth it. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. All or you're going to do is end up in the ground. Yeah. And then other they people would, are going to fuck your lady back home. Yeah. And then they would like specifically target, like sp- start speaking specifically to like African-American soldiers and being mm-hmm. like, you're fighting for a country that doesn't believe in you or care about you. Damn. So it's, dude, yeah. it was fucking yeah, dude. a lot. They it, would drop pamphlets uh, like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. overhead and it would just be like, yeah, why are you fighting for uncle Sam? He treats you like, you know, like Defect pieces to of Japan, shit. you know, yeah. like that kind of shit. She got tried for war crimes. Like after after war, yeah after World War Two they they arrested her and she got tried for war crimes. She I'm just a voice actor. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> I'm just fun. trying to make a buck. That's what I'm saying. It was just, it was just like, yeah. Wait, it, wait it, after after we dropped two atomic bombs on they Japan, they, they, they arrested they charged for the radio war. personality with war crimes. Yes, they did. Jeez. USA, USA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just that's brutal. Just yeah. I feel right. like after you drop two atomic bombs, feet. you're like, because she up. hurts him. Like, we yeah. dropped those, right. all the fire bombing we did on the right. civilian yeah. target. Maybe after the bombs, you say, we're even. Yeah, you'd think. 
At nope. the very most, no. we're even. And you know what? Fuck that bitch, too. That's what yeah, we said. Yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> did we get Rose? No. Where is she? We want her, too. We got a third one. Give us the bitch on the radio. Uh, on February 5th, according to military sources, Dorner checked into Naval, Boys, uh, Naval Base Point Loma in San Diego, but skipped checkout procedures when he left shortly after. Uh, no info on what he was doing there, what he was trying to get. One could assume more artillery, more firepower. Maybe he just wanted to say bye to someone. Military sources are not exactly forthcoming on that. Mm. Shocker. Uh, on February 7th, the burning remains of Dorner's vehicle, a dark gray 2005 Nissan Titan, uh, were located on a remote fire wow. trail near Big Bear Lake, about 80 miles from L.A. Uh, investigators, of course, spread the fuck out to try to find this dude. Uh, about 125 officers went from door to door. All the schools in Bear Valley Unified were uh, placed in the status of lockdown. Uh, didn't find him there. Uh, however, later that day, two LAPD officers were driving to a protection detail where they were assigned to security for one of the officers specifically targeted by Dorner when they were flagged down by a, a civilian. Uh, person who flagged them down reported seeing a man matching Dorner's description at a gas station in Corona. Uh, they investigated the report and were following the pickup truck. This is prior to it being, you know, discovered when the driver stopped, got out and fired a rifle at them, grazing the head of one officer. Uh, about 20 minutes after that, two other officers were ambushed while stopped in their marked patrol unit at a red traffic light in Riverside, uh, approximately 1 35 AM. One officer, Michael Crane, died shortly after the shooting, and the other was rushed to a nearby hospital in critical condition, but survived. Uh, about an hour and 25 minutes after that, at about 3 in the morning, man matching Dorner's description tried to steal a boat in San Diego, telling the boat's captain that he would take the boat to Mexico. A uh, federal criminal complaint was filed uh, the same day for allegedly fleeing California to avoid prosecution. That gets into the where they start searching for him in Mexico. Why did he say anything? Uh, he probably wanted to throw him off. That's what I was thinking, too. You know, I, I mean, mean, this is the same thing with him torching his truck. Right. I mean, this guy does seem to be someone who, while he was a reservist, at least had some kind of <laughs> yeah. training in disinformation and, you know, unconventional. He, he also went through police academy as well. So, he yeah, knows I mean, think. this man has been trained. And yeah. I bet he read a lot of Tom Clancy. It he probably like he did. did read a yeah. lot. That is a very good Yeah, that's yeah. on point. Yeah. Damn, I bet yeah. most of this actually came from him reading Tom Clancy. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> I mean, it worked for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he drove a fucking Turbo Titan. Oh, no, it's just he didn't. <laughs> no, that was my joke. Because he didn't even drive a Turbo Titan. It was he just, just a regular a Titan. Nissan yeah. Titan, which is the dumbest version of that truck. Get the oh. fucking Turbo, you cheapskate. Now, <laughs> fucking reservist. <laughs> I didn't do any military. <laughs> <laughs> We're all soft boys. <laughs> We're talkers. <laughs> yeah, I like how Sam's like shit talking with service like he was in the Marines. I, know. I fucking <laughs> killed people, okay? <laughs> you're talking shit like you're in a VFW that you frequently yeah. go to. <laughs> Those guys have to go to the fucking American talk Legion. Talk to me what when you drink soup out of a skull. <laughs> exactly. I, I have it. But you talk to me after you go. Um, now, interestingly enough, in his manifesto, he specifically says the only thing that will make me stop is a full investigation into my firing, a public apology from the chief of police, <laughs> a public apology, and everyone who is, he basically says, if you're lying, you have to admit it and you have to come out and say it to everybody. Yeah. Did that work? No. <laughs> oh, really? However, <laughs> interestingly enough, and I believe that this was a misdirection on the LAPD's part is that the, uh, they announced an investigation a reopening an investigation into Dorner's dismissal. So as to reassure the public that the police were doing everything in their power to capture him. And I'm sure that was just someone at the office was like, what if we just say we're doing it? And maybe he'll turn himself in. Yeah. He Spoiler is, alert. Yeah. He didn't. He don't. <laughs> he don't do that. Uh, February 10th, authorities offer a $1 million reward for information leading to the capture of Dorner. Um, and in the first time in the press, Dorner's actions are described as being a form of domestic terrorism. Uh, Dorner's. Uh, yeah. Domestic terrorism. Yeah. Definition wise, he fits. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You, a textbook even. Yeah, text him straight yeah. up. Uh, Dorner's <laughs> believed to be hiding somewhere Detective in the Detective Austin is on the case. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker right yes. here, man. I uh, also agree. That is a textbook definition. A knife sticking out of his forehead. I, would I have think he was this stabbed yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like some other detective says it first, but you say it louder and it will. Like 
<laughs> Good job, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm essentially the American Jacques Cousteau. Yeah. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> Uh, so around February 10th, they believe that he is hiding somewhere in the San Bernardino mountains. They send out an unmanned aerial aerial vehicle, uh, to try to find him. They believe he's going to make a run for the Mexican border. Right. Uh, later that day, a Lowe's home improvement store in Northridge, Los Angeles, which is pretty, pretty far from the San Bernardino mountains. It's not an easy trek, uh, was evacuated based on reports of a possible sighting of Dorner. So just, I'm going to take a pause here. The LAPD is shitting their pants oh, yeah, yeah. everyone is shitting their pants well oh, I, let me say a lot of people are they're sure. messing their britches and I mean, a lot uh-huh go ahead Grant. I, my, my big thing about that though is that like he's very clear on who he wants to kill going off of that so just like a random civilian I, there, I, there is a small group of people like, who are saying well i'm not a pig so i don't really care yeah i'm cool i would have continued I, yeah. to shop at the lows yeah i probably would have stayed in the lows too yeah but yes, people I have gardening to do. People are freaking out, and the, and as you, <laughs> and as you can imagine, the local news agencies, all owned by corporate interests who have a vested interest in keeping the police happy, um, that's whatever. Uh, are, I'm not arguing with you. Are I'll continue <laughs> blaring the fucking the sirens, man. They are they are just whipping people up as much as they can. Again, some people are like, "Well, I'm not a cop, so." Whatever the yeah. news says, I'm not freaked out. Yeah. But there are a number of people who are running around LA flipping the fuck out, freaking out. There are so many more reports of sightings of this guy mm-hmm. than I have mentioned. Yeah. A lot of people are saying, I just saw him. I just saw him there. I just saw him there. A lot of conflicting stuff. Everyone's freaking out. Uh, that <laughs> so there's just a whole bunch of people just call, like, I saw a black guy down the street. It's like, the. Uh, Sick. I don't want you to spoil <laughs> spoil the joke, but we're gonna get to something. Yeah. About that. It's not great. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. So, February 11th. Gee, a bunch of cops looking for a black dude. How could this possibly <laughs> fucking go Ooh. wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, the Riverside District Attorney on February 11th files former charges against Dorner for the murder of a police officer and the attempted murder of three other officers. Um, February 12th. Police raid a hotel in Tijuana, Mexico, based on a tip that he was there. Um, Authorities also discovered surveillance footage of Dorner purchasing scuba diving gear at a sporting goods store in Torrance, California. (laughs) That's fun. Dude, that scared the shit out of me. Like, I can't be in water, can't be on land. (laughs) It was just like one black guy wanted to get into scuba diving. (laughs) Damn. Did you have to go this? No, no, just like one guy. One guy who happened to be black. You went there. I'm just saying it's a black dude buying scuba gear. And the guy was like, suspicious. <laughs> yeah, some dude. And some dude was like, uh-uh, that don't happen. That don't stand. <laughs> that don't make, them pieces don't fit together. Yeah. That's Chris Dorner right there. <laughs> now. I was going to say something. I don't want to anymore. Yeah, just, let's just, not do over the bar anymore. Steve, at least let's in go this and moment. Cut all that out. <laughs> yeah, Steve, take that butt <laughs> Now, February 12th, Mountain Cabin Standoff. San Bernardino deputies respond to a report of a carjacking of a white Dodge truck on February 12th at 1222 PM. Begin looking for the vehicle on the ground from the air. Car drivers, not harmed. Fish and game officers spot the car first with Dorner. Dorner shoots uh, two San Bernardino sheriff's depart- deputies in the area of big bear Lake, California. Those deputies are airlifted. One died. One made it. Jesus Christ. Uh, the shootout begins after deputies respond. Uh, Sheriff's Department, San San Bernardino Sheriff's Department said Dorner was barricaded in a cabin near the command center of the manhunt in a mountainous rural area northeast of Angeles Oaks, California. The building gets surrounded. Uh, The Los Angeles Times reported that there might be hostages in the cabin with Dorner. I can't find out why they said that. I don't know if they were fed that. Dorner had no hostages. Uh, He was not a take them alive kind of guy. Mm. A uh, three-mile perimeter set up around the cabin, and residents were told to remain inside with their doors locked. Uh, police claimed they initially attempted to get Dorner out of the cabin by using ordinary cold tear gas, which is non-flammable, and demanding over loudspeakers that he surrender. Dorner did not respond, uh, so police used a demolition vehicle to knock down quite a few walls of the building. It's still standing, but it's not, it's not utterly collapsed yet. And again, this is a man who is registered to have several assault rifles, pistols, hella training, at least on some level. Mm -hmm. He's not coming out until they drag him out, right? 
they shot incendiary gas canisters called burners into the cabin next, which obviously is flammable. I'm sorry to stop you real quick. Yeah. But I do think it's hilarious. They're like, stay inside, lock your doors. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, Chris Dorner seems like the kind of guy, like, if your door is locked, he's getting in. Yeah. Also, it's like, it's one of those things where I kind of get in that, like, what else are they going to tell you to make you feel better? Yeah, you know, what yeah, else can yeah. you really do? Because if this guy decides your ass is on the, on the lawn. If your ass is grass. Yeah. yeah. He's, then he's coming for it. Yeah. That lawnmower. So they shoot in incendiary gas canisters called burners into the cabin. Cabin lights on fire. <laughs> I just got the your ass is grass. He's coming with the lawnmower thing. I just, like, <laughs> that, that just clicked for me. Yeah. Lawnmowers, uh, uh, like, they cut grass. Hey, Grant. Just trying to talk shit. <laughs> uh, shortly thereafter, um, a single gunshot from the cabin was heard. Fire continued. Ammunition is exploding inside the cabin, going off, popping oh, like shit. crazy. Yeah, that. Officials did not try to put out the fire. They stood there and watched that mother burn. Uh, law enforcement experts differ on whether using pyrotechnic devices to end the standoff instead of just waiting them out was justified. Uh. I mean... Yeah, you go to war with the cops. They're just going to set the building you're on on fire. They do that anyway. Yeah, they just did that anyway. I mean, so, they fucking I'm, did that in yeah, they Philly. They did that by accident. Yeah. 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 So, like. Yeah, they shoot the wrong person all the time. Yeah. <laughs> now they want you. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to just be like, hey, man, come out and we'll talk. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just a bad negotiator. Hey, bud, we're just here to talk. Just put down the guns. <laughs> now, the LAPD shortly after all of this has happened, claimed that they did everything within their power to end this in a nonviolent way. <laughs> right. Instead of holding up a microphone, he literally just covered his mouth like, hey, Chris, you want to come out and talk to us? He's not answering. Light it up. <laughs> all right, go. Time for plan B, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, we tried. Now, this is interesting, though, is the LA Times did receive a radio transmission while it was obtained. So they either... Somehow got it when they were listening on the radio or someone gave it to them. But there is a recording of a law enforcement officer stating, we're going to go forward with the plan with the burner. Yeah. Obviously. I don't think yeah. anyone's that surprised that they were like, yeah, the guy who just shot at a bunch of us and killed some of us. Yeah. We're going to kill his ass. Yeah. 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 That's what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, so in the evening of that same day, LA uh, PD and the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office denied reports that a body believed to be Dorners had been recovered from a burning cabin. Press conference, LAPD Commander Andrew Smith stated no body had been removed from the site, adding that the reports of a body being identified were untrue as the cabin area was too hot to make entry. Now, supposedly they waited till the next day, February 13th, which is when it was reported that human rain remains had been found in the search for Dorners' body in the cabin. Wallet with a California driver's license with his name was found in the rubble of the cabin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Run that by me one more time. This whole time he had his license on him? <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Here you go, officer. Right. So they reported on the 13th that they had found human remains in the cabin or in the in the search through the cabin where they knew Dorner was at. <laughs> and that a wallet with a California driver's license with his name was found in the rubble of the cabin. A fireproof wallet. They also state that they only pulled one body from the cabin. So they're pretty sure they got their guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they surrounded a building and then set it on fire. Why the fuck did they think of... <laughs> All right. I just love that he kept his ID on the whole time. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, hang on, hang on. But yeah, after this, I'm going to go get a couple beers. It's, it's, I, 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 I want to play devil's advocate for just like, you know, just give me like 30 seconds real quick. Right, I will say like, you know, it might have been best that they killed him because Dorner sounds like the last guy you want in prison, right? Yeah. Because I feel like every prisoner is going to be like, like they're not going to be like angry at him. They're like, you're the best guy ever. They're going to be like, dude, you're the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Like teach us how, and he's going to uproot that entire prison and they're going to turn, which as much as I love that that's idea, very, that's a very good point. It's Batman level super villain. That's just an, uh, also hit final him with the ID just reminds me of that Chappelle show bit where he's like, every time I, uh, a guy gets shot and he sprinkles crack on himself. <laughs> yeah. like, I, don't, I don't leave no mysteries. <laughs> it's he like, just pulls out his ID. I just want him to know. I just need him to know. Let me staple this to my shirt. All right, now I'm going to shoot myself in the head. Yeah. 
So later that day, uh, the San Bernardino County Sheriff John McMahon said that the deputies did not intentionally burn down the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Was he d- throwing air quotes around every word? <laughs> Did not intentionally, intentionally <laughs> burn down the cabin. Now, in case pulling the only body out of the cabin that you know Chris Dorner was in wasn't enough, February 14th, medical examiners confirmed during an autopsy using dental records that was, in fact, Chris Dorner. Thereby settling conclusively any question as to whether he had died. <laughs> Guys, I think that was Chris Dorner. In the like you just see like this one crispy body. Did he die by fire? Because I'm thinking it's fire. <laughs> now, it's, fucking, it's like doctor. murder on the Orient Express, but it's Austin with a big detective <laughs> Austin. <laughs> uh, Sheriff's office announced the autopsy showed Dorner died from the single gun shot wound to the head, which, yeah, I actually believe them on that. I'm mm-hmm. sure he was like, fuck y'all. You can't take me. And I'm not. And he already knew he wasn't getting out of it alive. He had no illusions about fire. that. Yeah. So it was their only option, blah, blah, blah. So they had to do it. Whatever. Why do I imagine that meme of the dog sitting in the burning house? This is fine. This is fine. I planned this all along. You remember how we were talking about all the chaos and fear and the police looking for a specific black man in a city of several black men who could be mistaken for someone? We were just trying to go scuba diving. So, Mm -hmm. in two separate incidents on February 7th, police fired on people who turned out to be unrelated to Dorner who was not anywhere close to either location. Awesome. Tight. Um, About 5.30 in the morning, LAPD officers. um, Oh, that's too early to be shooting somebody. (laughs) Yeah. Come on. They opened fire on the back. Going home from work or you just woke up. Right. But either way. Yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. So 5.30 in the morning, these these guys unload on the back of a light blue Toyota Tacoma, shoot two female occupants, age 47 and 71. F- two females? Who Two ladies okay. who were delivering newspapers for the LA Times. Okay. Uh, according to officers, they freaked out because the vehicle was spotted exiting a freeway and heading to the area of the residence that the officers were protecting. And they thought that it matched the description of a 2005 gray Nissan Titan which I will <laughs> reiterate. It was a light blue Toyota Tacoma. <laughs> Toyota Tacoma, a superior truck, a Nissan Titan, a Bobo-ass a bitch Tacoma? truck. You could have a 2013 Tacoma. They'll still take fucking like They'll try to buy it off you for like 40 grand. Goddamn Those right. things fucking retain value like I nothing ha- else. I have a fucking 98 Tacoma. It doesn't have turn signals. I've already had three people try and buy it off Hell me. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, dude, the thing rules. Nissan Titans suck arse. Looking at you, my brother, Luke. Your stupid ass <laughs> Turbo Titan. What's wrong with your turn signals? Do you I, I don't know. <laughs> they don't work. They don't work. So <laughs> I actually I had narrowed down They're the old. issue. I just yeah. I just um, the is, part that I need for it is ninety dollars from the dealership, and I refuse. To is it that. like out of blinker fluid? Yeah. 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 I that just with the hat and the shirt. That shirt says I go to Aldi's for the moms. <laughs> which collar? Which collar bones nice. hurts? I'm gonna Sorry. I'm gonna get you out of the <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> you out <laughs> Um the two uh the two women in that truck were identified as Margie Carranza, age 47, and her 71-year-old mother, Emma Hernandez. Hernandez, the 71-year-old, was shot in the back. Carranza received wound to her hands. Their uh attorney claimed police had no idea who was in that vehicle when they opened fire, which yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously. And that nothing about his clients or their vehicle matched the descriptions given of the suspect or his truck, which again, yes, it is also 100% verified. Neither of these women were given a prior warning to be fired upon. No, hey, this Jesus. is LAPD. Chill the fuck out. Get down on the ground. Cut the cut the keys and cut the ignition. Just Those cops were hammered. Uh, probably. It was 5.30 in the morning. They're going to watch some <laughs> random ass neighborhood. They're shotgun and beers in that cruiser now <laughs> 25 minutes after that in the torrents the torrents police department struck an open fire on another vehicle uh like the first shooting the incident involved a vehicle that police claim resembled the description of uh dorner's truck but was later discovered to be a black honda ridgeline driven by a white guy uh yes. <laughs> yeah the uh guy was on his way to go surfing before work uh, 
cop car slams into him and the guy opens fire while his car is fucking T-boned into him, just starts unloading into him. Uh, thankfully, this guy was not hit by any of the bullets. But <laughs> <laughs> Hammered! But, hammered yeah. in his truck. Or in his car. I got him, boys! <laughs> but, <laughs> dude. but uh, Holy getting shit. hit did fuck him up some. Yeah, I bet. Uh, he, was, he was hurt pretty good. Um, in April 2013, just February, March, April. So basically two months later, the LAPD paid $4.2 million settlement to Margie Carranza and Emma Hernandez, her mother, the two women who were mistakenly shot. No word if uh, David Perdue, the fellow who was ran into and somehow not shot, uh, if he got a settlement. But David Perdue, if you're listening, fucking get on that shit. I, really. I hope we got a new surfboard or something. So, something. Fucking damn. So... Kind of proved Dorner's point a also, little this bit. Also, all right, hold on, hold on. Can I just quick? quick that is the whitest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. There is a citywide manhunt going on, and you're like, I think I'm gonna go cruise on over to the beach and have a nice like surf. Before I mean, work. life doesn't stop when there's chaos. I you know? mean, you gotta- I guess, but it's. <laughs> You would have been there encouraging him to go surfing. He would have been like, Sam, I don't know, man. People are freaking out. He'd be like, what are they going to do? Shoot up the beach? Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. 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 Tell yeah, you to right. do something stupid. I, That's I, something tragic. My yeah. exact words would be, you're not a fucking cop. What are you worried about? <laughs> yeah. Fucking surf. Then your roommate would come home later and be like, bro, <laughs> you were so wrong. And I'd be like, not the ridge line, dude. <laughs> not the ridge line. That is a perfectly acceptable truck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is... Um, that is essentially the story of Chris Dorner. Now, in case you were curious, these are just a few notes that I have, and, I've, and I'm not trying to keep anybody, so I'm just going to go through the LAPD section. Yeah. If you were wondering how well LAPD has done in the aftermath of this, if they have taken any of this and said, Probably great. You know, I hey, I, in stride. this That's is a guy is. that obviously murdered some people. This is a man who was dangerous, unstable, and declared war on us. He claims that we're the ones that are occupying American territories or American streets as if we are soldiers, which if you really want to get into the weeds on this, law enforcement departments all over the country are trained by former Iraqi war veterans of Operation Enduring Freedom, people whose entire job was to stay in a foreign country and occupy it. They've been taught the same tactics by those people to then apply to our cities. You can see them patrolling. They have armored personnel carriers. They are fucking marked. They follow around. They are here, right? Now, if that presence comforts you, hey, congratulations on being white and naive. If it doesn't, well, you might be, you might be wondering, did they take any of this to heart? Did this cause any of the changes that Chris Dorner claimed would? He said he was, he was a warrior for truth and he wanted people to know what the police department does to people. So (laughs) LAPD sends the greatest number of youth offenders to state prison and runs a massive youth caging detention center that costs over $400 million annually that has uh, about, I think if I remember correctly, it was something like two in 10 people there have claimed to be raped, assaulted, or, uh, extorted by the people who guard them, which remember, this is an LAPD sanctioned, funded, ran facility. Uh, after a, this is what I was talking about earlier. I have a freedom of information request was, uh, filed for LAPD's public and personnel records. LAPD has a huge number of undercover officers, a lot more than a department of that size would be expected to have. Right? So if someone said, I want to know who's a police officer, they're public servants. They're there supposed to help us. I'd like to have a list of your pro of your personnel records. Uh, chief of police, my, um, it's M I C H E L. But I, he doesn't look like a Michelle to me. M-I-C-H-E-L? Or M-I-C-H-E-L. It might be Michelle. Mitchell. It, Mitchell. Chief of Police Mitchell Moore falsely claimed that they had a Michael. whistleblower after these records had been, you know, uh, uh, requested and given, and that their records were illegally e- leaked and began deleting those records from public file. Oh, he's cute. Uh, Chief Moore has also falsely claimed um, that heckling and protesting are not First Amendment protected, which is, you guessed it, False. Uh, Supreme Court ruled in 1963 that protesting is protected free speech. Uh, Now, you might be asking yourself in the inner in the year since how many civilian involved shootings have there been? 
Well, over the past five years, New York Police Department, for you know, uh, comparison, is at 127. LAPD and L and LASD, 305. Whoa. Uh, Damn. LA County has 10 million people and New York City has 8.5 million. Yet LA has about two and a half times the rate of officer involved shootings. Uh, it has been confirmed. I'm not joking when I say this. This has been confirmed by not only investigators, but the LAPD and LASD themselves that there are uh, gangs operating or gangs of officers targeting young Latinos operating within the department. And I do mean gangs. These are blood in, blood out, drug running gangs. As in, an autopsy report revealed that an East L.A. man had been shot 13 times in the back by deputies, which is part of an ongoing civil trial. Uh, no names of any of the officers involved in that have been released. I mean, really, like, we could get into the weeds on this. In the yeah. past three months, we've learned of a uh, man starving to death in a jail in Arkansas, yeah. a man starving to death in a jail in Indiana, and a man literally being eaten alive by insects in a jail in Georgia. Mm -hmm. All three of these men were held pre-trial, which means, well, all three of these men were held with pre held pre-trial and were documented as having mental health issues. All three of these men died in prison, presumed innocent. Right. Now, some of them couldn't afford bail. Some of them were being held on uh, charges that have been alleged to be trumped up, as in like planted evidence. But you can make of that what you will, but innocent people die. Uh, this is just sort of another, another thing. In 2014, I uh, want to talk about theft, civil forfeiture, which do you guys know what civil forfeiture is? Yeah, it's when the guy... Was it the government takes your shit? Yeah, so it is a uh, legal mandate that basically if the government says, I think you are going to use this for a crime, it could be large sums of cash, it could be a car, it could be a water bottle, literally an inanimate object, anything that you can think of, they could say, I have reasonable suspicion to believe that that could be used in a crime. They can legally take it from you. And even if they don't have to prove that you were committing a crime or that you were on your way to, they just have to say, I believe this is associated with criminal conduct. And I think you could do something with this. They can just take it. Yeah. There's no appeal. They could literally take your house right now if they thought they, if they wanted to, uh, in 2014. And if you want to have a scale on how often this happens for real, in 2014, the top annual, the top dollar rate annually in burglaries, this is combined across the United States, was just shy of $4 billion. That same number in civil forfeiture, over $5 billion. Those numbers have continued to climb since then. And listen, this is the last one, I promise. <laughs> you guys have heard of Cop City in Atlanta. It is a $90 million urban warfare training center specifically for police to train in urban combat. They are going to, uh, they plan to bulldoze an extremely historic forest in Atlanta that is in a predominantly black neighborhood that is one of the few actual green areas of Atlanta. It is a environmental wonder. People have studied it. It actually does show that it not only reduces like a emissions from cars but it helps with oxygenating the area it helps with the ecosystem in there i mean it, it truly is like a good thing for the people of atlanta especially in that neighborhood to have and there are trying to bulldoze it there are people sitting there right now in the trees trying to keep that from happening Damn. now there was a protester his name was manuel esteban paez Turan, known as tortuguita he was a very well-known person he was a local to atlanta people liked him he was shot 57 times by ah, six damn. Georgia police officers Holy Fuck! in what is becoming increasingly clear was an execution. Uh, police claimed he had a gun and released a photo of one. And I swear to God, I'm not shitting you when I say this. It was a Smith and Wesson M and P nine shield 2.0. That is again, not joking, a model exclusively issued to law enforcement. To LA or the uh, dumbasses Georgia so the, police. You're saying that they kind of photoshopped it in there. They tweeted a photo of the gun on the ground. Oh, like with I like see. what you and can see, see in a grassy area yeah, and yeah. said, this was the gun that we found. And that's they, one of those guys just took their gun off their belt, put it in the ground, took a picture of it and be like, there's yeah, the gun. Like, there it is. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's just lazy at that point. Yeah. I if, mean, 
Like you could probably pull a gun that was confiscated from some other yeah. situation. Or like, Google pictures of gun on ground. <laughs> <Or> <laughs> you could just, just do that. that. You don't even have to work for it. Yeah. That's so true. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> now what's being done with, uh, you know, Torjuguito rest in power. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> How's the system working? Uh, The city of Atlanta put together a community task force that cannot legally discuss what happened with anyone. The American Civil Liberties Union of Georgia dropped out of the investigation and the UN visited to discuss investigate and to discuss locals interactions with law enforcement for fear of human rights abuses. Damn. The UCLA dropped out of it? The uh yeah the ACLU, or, ACLU. yeah or, sorry, yeah the yeah, American yeah. Civil Liberties what did I say, Union UCLA That's I think you funny. did I did yeah. you got Cali on the brain I did. baby damn it uh <laughs> yeah so we could get I I could get into the weeds on this and if I wanted to do an episode on police abuses of authority holy shit could we do that yeah we could do a whole goddamn series on it I was gonna say that so is- I'm gonna give a quick pause for anyone who's interested in this kind of stuff. Let me shout out a book I've been reading. Uh, it's called Our Enemies in Blue by Christian Williams. Uh, it is a fantastic, well-researched, well-thought-out book about the nature of policing, the history of policing from when it came from uh, um, antebellum southern uh, slave patrols who would you know, look for, pe- look for black people just to throw them back over the fucking Mason-Dixon line and just say, yeah, you're ours now. Um, it talks about, uh, alternatives to policing. What does abolish the police actually mean? Community focused outreach programs, non-lethal deterrence, non-lethal response squads for traffic and mental health calls. And it even talks about ways that if you need a SWAT team for something, what does that look like? And what is the best way to do that? How do you actually not just say, cause people say abolish the police and then people think, Oh, well, it's just going to be chaos. There are actual structural changes that this uh, person just puts out in such a fantastic way. If you're interested, get that book. It's great. My main point in bringing up all that stuff was to demystify the idea of police as selfless protectors who will lay down their lives in a moment's notice for people. Um, Chris Dorner, he did what he did. He said a lot of things. Sometimes bad people make good points. Sometimes good people make bad points. You know, you sometimes have to break down the information that you're getting and to try to look at it. I'm not saying that he was right in doing what he did, but if we can understand what he did, if we can see why he did those things, if we can see even the truths that he pointed out, along with the falsehoods that he pointed out, Hangover 3 sucks. He didn't need to be (laughs) alive for that movie. I don't know if anybody saw the movie. I I I, 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 I think not. I saw like the first few minutes and was like, no, why am I doing Is this, this to the myself? Retur- that's the return to Vegas one, right? I think so. I honestly don't even know the plot. I just know. I, I may have watched it. I saw the first one, didn't it. like it, and was like, I, you know, I know. It, it's not going to go up. It, you know? it, it was a good movie for junior high or for high school, whenever yeah. the fuck it came out. So I'm just going to hit y'all. This is my this is my Chris Dorner hot take. Pow, pow. Some people think he's think he's a monster. Steve, real quick, if, if when Joseph says hot take, he had like like a sizzling, kss, or like like smoldering Ooh. fire. Like this I is like hot that, take. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Joseph's hot takes. Yeah, It'd be a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so some people think he's a monster. Um, some people think he's a terrorist or a mentally ill maniac who murdered protectors of our community. Some people think he's a hero, a man who stood against the corruption he saw specifically as a black man embedded firmly in a system designed to keep him and people like him down. My personal take, and I'm going to summarize as succinctly and tastefully as I can. I think this is one of the few, if not the only times, that a mentally ill person had access to firearms and committed a spree killing that sort of had a point. Not saying that he, you know... That's it. That's my take. Yeah, I think he had a point. I don't know if it was like a good one. Right. You know, people only engage in targeted violence as a means to spread a message, further a goal or dishearten an occupying force to the extent that they will leave and never come back. Yes, Dorner was correct in his allegations of corruption. Was he correct in his specific allegations about himself? Because at the end of the day, if you really want to look at it, yes, Dorner was saying that the police do this. But he didn't seem to mind being a cop up until it hit him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He didn't seem to have as much of a... Honestly, he didn't seem to have as much of a problem with it as long as it worked for him. Yeah. And when he found out, like a lot of people do, like a lot of the gay people who are trying to bash trans people right now as saying that they're separate from that movement, are finding out that when you act like a pick-me bitch, you get taken down too. Yeah. 
It doesn't matter if you're on their side, if you say any, if you say that, you know, you're with them, as soon as it becomes convenient to turn against you, they will personally as a one-on-one man to man type thing. I do think violence is justified. I think sometimes it's the only thing that you can do. But that being said, it bears an extremely heavy responsibility to put on yourself when you claim that you know who has to die. When you take upon yourself to be judge, jury, and executioner, it's vigilantism at best. And the reason that we think so highly of vigilantism and heroes is we're all tired of living under a boot. We all feel the pressure. We all feel it coming down, whether, you know, from whatever sources, wherever you're feeling, we all know what it's like to be watched and monitored and to know that like any time that someone who makes a little bit more money than you or has a badge chooses to, your life ceases to hold meaning. And that's a terrifying thing that we all have to either reckon with on a daily basis at, at times or just something that we find out. And when you find out and you find out the rules don't actually make sense or they don't work for you, it's scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why we idolize superheroes and folk figures, people like Batman or John Turner or hell, even the myths of the founding fathers as renegade intellectual freedom fighters. You know, no one loses sleep over people that we can view as evil. Stormtroopers, Joker's henchmen or redcoats. We all simplify things down to good versus evil because it makes it easier for us to accept, to make clear lines of judgment that fit into our own moral dimensions. But life is not a movie or a video game or a novel. We can't use a military industrial complex propaganda thinly veiled as the latest Marvel movie to try to interpret the consequences of violence. It's a lot more real than that. We can all argue whether or argue about if Chris Dorner was justified in his rampage. But again, I think it would be better to ask ourselves what led to it, what could have prevented it, and what is happening to us as a society right now. Not to the people in power, but to those of us who are held in check by its iron grip. Because like it or not, this is not going to stop until we stop it. Good job. Nice. Now I want to challenge Joseph. Uh, So I've been watching this uh, YouTube series uh, called Copaganda. And I've really enjoyed it thus far. Uh, Basically, he just goes into pretty much every show that is a a cop show. From Brooklyn Nine-Nine to Paw Patrol... Um, oh yeah! Oh, why you gotta be bringing Paw Patrol? A cab includes Paw Patrol. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Uh, he, he did a, a they know. <laughs> <laughs> he did a really uh, good deep dive on the show called The Shield, mm-hmm. um, and oh, yeah. now I want to watch The Shield and be able to like, you know, I want to know my own judgment, my own take on that show. Yeah, have you seen The Shield? I've I've probably seen like an episode or two. Now, Isn't that the one with Michael Chiklis, the big yeah. bald dude? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know of it. I'm pretty sure he's like a really shitty guy. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think the they whole, make him out to be, you know, uh, like you. Michael Chiklis is a reasonable. shitty guy, or the cop is the cop. Like probably the, the both. Main character. I, I think it's one of those shows where it's like it's a show about bad cops. Like like The Wire is technically like a show. I which I I will say I will preface this. I've only seen like three episodes of The Wire, but it's like one of those. It's like the cops are bad people. Who are trying to like find other bad people, but yeah. they're being bad guys while they're doing it. It's it's. I mean, it is a classic mythos of the. Uh, I mean, we see it in True Detective. We see it in uh, in The Wire. Is yeah. the the police officer who, at the end of the day, is doing bad things, but yeah. is trying to do them for a good reason. Yeah, right, right, right. Now, uh, I'm, I will. The The Wire is a little more nuanced. I would say. Like, I would. It's, say, it's, well, it's more like bad people can be good cops. Yeah, is like a lot of the message. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, but that I really enjoyed parts of the wire. The wire has some like fantastic writing, but it also has some of the worst writing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's fair. It, I, it's really weird, but like it doesn't go into like a bad cop doing good. It's okay. more like a good cop who also is a bad person. Okay. I, the only reason I want to watch it is because people keep telling me Michael B. Jordan's good in it. And I like kind of refuse to believe that he can be good in anything. <laughs> um, Michael B. Jordan's in it. Yeah. Is it like young Michael B. Jordan? Yeah. He must be really young. He's like yeah, one he's of like, the little like, drug dealer kids. Yeah. It's it's uh, like, it's like, like, I mean, that sure came out in the early two thousands. He's is that him? Yeah. yeah. He's like a teenager. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, I didn't piece that together. And yeah. I was like, everybody, every time I talk shit about Michael B. Jordan, people are like, who's amazing in the wire. I'm like, he was a child in that. How high was your bar for child actors? Yeah, that's true. Well, the child actors in that show do a fantastic job because um, a lot of that show basically is 
how do I put this? It, it's all like uh, the the moral judgment call, like who yeah. is good and who is bad. And you can see like a lot of the kids there are stuck in this situation. Like they're not necessarily bad people, but they are doing bad things to their community. But yeah. like they don't know any better and they're controlled by the people who are way above them. Controlling Idris Elba. Idris Elba. He fucking fuck. He's, He's so fuck. hot, dude. He fucks, dude. <laughs> uh, who uh, who is it? The is the a black actor who died. Uh, he was the drug. Chadwick deal. Boseman. No, the, he's the dude with the scar. Yeah. On his face. Oh. Um, oh. Uh, I don't know. I know. You're he, he's the drug dealer. What's oh, up? Uh, Thank you, Michael Thank you. K. Williams. Michael K. Oh my Williams. god, that guy, <laughs> dude. In the wire. So good. Dude, in the wire. That I think that's his best performance because, yeah. like, it made me fall in love with him as an actor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. Um, I don't know if you've seen him in interviews um, prior and after to The Wire, but he was talking about, like, how hard it is as an actor of, like, you know, you can be loved, you can be a prized actor, but, like, you never know when your next gig is. Yeah. Yeah. And he was saying, like, one day he was just, like, super depressed, and he was, like, I think he said he was, like, drinking a lot, doing drugs, and then he got the call for The Wire. Like, like he was, like, I think about, I was thinking about suicide a lot. Yeah. And, like, then he got the call for The Wire and was able to, like, He's very together. thoughtful, dude. He did yeah. this really cool video where he like, like there was like a younger version of himself, an older version of himself, and the version of himself oh, now. Yeah. And they were like having a discussion of like, well, what do you think? It's do you think you're furthering stereo- stereotypes by playing people like drug dealers in The Wire? And like, do you think that like you know are you just getting actor or work as a black actor by f- fulfilling stereotypes and roles? And he does this really interesting like dialogue with himself yeah. about like how he used to think about it, how he thinks about it now and where he thinks he's going. And it's, it's cool. just, it's, it's, it really is like a little just glimpse that. at his head yeah, cool. in, or into his head, but it's very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Worth a watch. I mean, even uh, Denzel Washington, he had a lot of pushback for taking on the role in training day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because prior to that, because it was a bad movie. Don't you Whoa. dare Whoa. fucking Whoa. say that. Training Whoa. Day's a fucking Sam's hot take. What to, the fuck? You like to get wet? <laughs> stupid. Fucking Training Day is so... F- Dude, stupid fuck movie. off, Sam. <laughs> I'm so surprised at you. No, I, I just like saying that because it oh. gets, it's like looking at a bunch of straight dudes and telling them how The Dark Knight's a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got triggered there for a second. Yeah, 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 fucking did. <laughs> but he doesn't have an Italian man and it's uh, yeah. trash. No, it's got an Italian guy in it. It's got Italian Who? dudes. It's got a bunch of Italian guys. Like right at the very fucking beginning, it's got a bunch of Italian guys. Fucking what's? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's got Mar- uh, Maroni. Or Maroni, yeah, 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 Falcone. Yeah. Falcone, hey. Falcone. Do what um, you think it was some Swedish dude named Falcone yeah, up there? I, I, oh, come on, man, that was get a grease out, ball. Get in my fucking face. I'm an what Italian gangster. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you pipe in with. That's what you're piping in with. A Swedish fish. A Swedish <laughs> chef saying, "Uh oh." Batman kicks in the door. <laughs> 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 But yeah, he got a lot of flack because like that was the first time him Give playing. Give me all your monies. Uh, and, and, <laughs> oh, but, but, first time playing uh, an anti-hero, specifically oh, like, yeah, a corrupt yeah, yeah. cop. Yeah. And they were saying like he shouldn't take on that role um, when he's been playing purely good protagonists. And he said, yeah. uh, don't you understand? My character gets to bang Ava Mendes. <laughs> so I'm going to do the role. Fair. Yeah. That was his argument. That was his, I get it. Like, <laughs> good like, argument. He's like, yeah, 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 I get it. But have you yeah. seen Ava? <laughs> Shout out to Ava Mendez. Yeah. Best star anytime. Love she, to have you. Yeah. She'd be she great. would hate this. She would hate this. <laughs> yeah. She would hate everybody. Which would just add so much. <laughs> I feel bad of, for of Grace a being a room over. Show. Imagine <laughs> being in the room here. Doing right. her damnedest to not have to hear us. I wish she didn't have to. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish you guys didn't have to hear us. The listeners. You should probably just stop this. Yeah. Okay, cool. End right. of fucking yeah, series. Yeah, take, take a name of Mendo's part. <laughs> so there were these hobos behind us. <laughs> and well, that's our episode for yeah. today. Yeah, thanks go. for uh, joining us uh, joining us on this little manhunt, this little excursion through the woods of California. Eh? We did it. Um, I'm actually going to backpedal on everything. I just said I hated how I ended that. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Um, bye. <laughs> Much better second take. Good yeah, job. That was actually a lot better. Thanks. Anyway. I felt a lot better on that one. Yeah. Should we all uh, reintroduce ourselves or uh, no, no? No, just uh, they don't need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but, fuck you guys. They'll, they'll figure it out. You don't get they'll shit from us. Figure it out. Right. One episode. Oh, what? Twelve by now. So was, like they're like, oh, I know that voice. Uh, I don't know. I'm a guest star, aren't I? Or am I in the show? 
I mean, like you. I think in, technically you're your in third the, episode. You're accompanied by the friends, lovers okay. slash. We should probably include you in the intro, right? I mean, I don't care. Well, you said you weren't uh, gonna have time. Yeah, no, that's why I was asking. I was like, right, I, right, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, way back I, my when. My feelings that hurt. That no, I'm not I mean back in the when. Intro. If yeah. you're if you're gonna be regular, man, we'll put you in the fucking intro. Nah, no, oh. Sam I mean, told it, me he ain't got time. I to don't, that's write, what I thought. Write I a script to be. Yeah, I well, he gets time to dick around. Yeah, I got time to dick around. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. We're all about that. You, you don't got to put me in the permanent intro. I didn't know if I needed to be in the intro for this. Oh, I thought episode. you wanted to. Never mind. You don't get the intro. I'm all right. This is harder than it needs to be. It's not that heavy, man. I tell, I promise. Everybody, <laughs> this is Sam. What's up, fuckers? There you go. That's all you get. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, well, all see right. everybody later. Bye. 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 Right, bye. <sighs> and the book of mysteries closes on our heroes. Until next time, my fellow wanderer, my kindred spirit of the graveyard, we've had some laughs, some soinks, and maybe even learned a thing or two along the way. Think of us for your next podcast listening pleasure. Think of us when you go to sleep, the house settles, you got your box of Scooby snacks, and then you feel something there. <laughs> Raggy? Is my Venus? If you like what you hear, subscribe. Follow us on Instagram at Trashville underscore USA. If there's a true crime story you want us to cover, email us at don't email Trashville at gmail.com. I don't fucking understand. We tell them to email us, and then we don't want them to email? What the fuck? What kind of fucking marketing is that? Jesus fucking Christ, Jamie.